What's up, everybody? Thank you for coming back to the channel. I want to talk about something that we don't talk about anymore, and that is the Canon R5C. I don't know why. With all the new cameras, the R5 Mark II, the R6 Mark III, the Canon C400, the R1, Canon has just produced so many great cameras, but they forgot about the R5C. The R5C has so many video codecs, right? But the biggest issue with the R5C is that when mirrorless cameras are introduced into the world, they're mostly for photographers first. And the R5 came out, it was a great photographer's camera. 45 megapixel sensor. You can actually shoot 8K 30, but of course it might overheat. And of course you had the 30 minute time limit. So that was one of the hindrances of the R5 outside of all the other little quirks that some people don't like about cameras, but to each his own, right? The R5C came out and it actually introduced a fan. Now, this fan actually cooled down the camera so you didn't need to do anything else where you had to stop, cool off the camera, put it in a cool location or anything else like that because the R5C solved that. And as an added bonus, they gave you cinema features. So this camera is like right in between an R5 and a C70. So you have the Cinema OS for those that actually want to shoot video. And then you have the 45 megapixel sensor for those that shoot photo. Now, the biggest problem is that the battery that comes with these cameras, they don't last that long. Maybe 45 to an hour, depending on how you shoot. So if you're a photographer, you probably get an hour out of this battery. If you're doing video with this, 30 to 45 minutes, and that's depending on how you shoot, because if you're gonna shoot 4K, 120, you're not gonna get 45 minutes out of this, maybe a half an hour. It kind of reminds me of the Black Magic. If anybody has ever used the Black Magic camera, they know exactly what I'm talking about. Those cameras came with those batteries, the Sony, the new Sony batteries, but they still didn't last long. So what that forces you to do is to get a power base. Now this, is a core power battery bank that is attached to this camera. It lasts for about two hours, two and a half hours, depending on how you're shooting. So for a videographer or a, uh, an event photographer or even an event videographer, this is actually very good. You get the photo side and you also get the cinema side for recording those great quality pictures. The biggest issue is that IBIS is missing. You don't have ND filters. And I think that's where people get the misconception that this is a full-fledged cinema camera and it's not. It's a hybrid camera. Most mirrorless cameras, like I said, were built with the intention of photography in mind. This is just an added bonus. So to get the best out of the camera, you probably just have to buy an external adapter, which is what I did. This is a Mikey adapter that I have on here, which has an ND filter. That's my drop in ND filter for it. And then you have the battery issue. So outside of that, it's really not that big of a deal. So if you're gonna shoot on a gimbal, IBIS is not an issue anymore. And even if you put it on sticks, IBIS is not an issue anymore. It does have a digital image stabilizer where it crops on the image. So let's just say, for instance, if I use a 24 millimeter, it'll probably crop it to about a 26, 28, you know, just a little bit into the picture. So it's really not that bad. That's on the extreme because it has a, a normal and then it has an enhanced version. So anybody who used the R5, they know exactly what I'm talking about with that. You get that punch in on the camera. But outside of that, there's so many great features. You know, you have the cinema codex on here. So many choices that you have from here. So if you want to do these talking heads, you can use the long GOP or if you're gonna do something where it has a lot of motion, you might want the OI, and that gives you in each format. You have the 1080 version, 2K version, you have the 4K version, you can even shoot raw and raw internally. I think that's one of the main turning points for this camera is that you can actually shoot up to 8K raw in this camera. They have raw light, raw standard, and raw high quality. When you're gonna shoot raw, you're gonna need a CF Express and you're probably gonna need one with a lot of space, right? Preferably at least one to two terabytes. You can shoot with the 512, but it depends on how much raw footage you plan on um, using. So it has the same slots as the R5. You have the SD slot, and you also have the CF Express slot. So 
those are two good features for it. So if you want to shoot redundant, you can, depending on the type of format that you're using, of course. And then it also has your cooling features. So everything was solved with the Canon R5C, but no one talks about it. And I think that this was the same issue with the 5D series, with the 5D as the, the flagship 5 series camera. And then they have the 5D Mark II. The 5D Mark II, you actually use that camera to shoot some great cinema quality pictures. Motion pictures were actually used shooting the 5D Mark II. Some, some TV shows that you probably watched were you shooting the 5D Mark II. And that's when everybody gets into it with the Sony, the FX3, I believe, or the FX30, one of them, whichever one is the full frame, I'm not too sure. It shows the capability of these cameras. And I think that what Canon was trying to do was actually reproduce that. The 5D Mark III didn't have all those features, but it still had a little bit of upgrade. It had better autofocus. And it's along the line of exactly what they did with the 5 Series, in my opinion. I could be wrong. You could drop a comment. Let me know in the comments if you feel that this is along the same lines as the 5D Mark II going into the 3 and then going into the 4. So the 5 Series was always a great camera. But you have to think about what is it that you plan on doing with this camera, you know? You have to actually think about your budget and will it work with the software that you have on your computer? And I think that shooting in 8K, a lot of people don't have the computer power to actually push the 8K how they would like to, especially if you're gonna do all these um, transitions and colorings and- Oops, I just wanna interject in right here and I wanna thank my sponsors. That is Dehancer Pro Film Emulation. Now, if you're not aware of Dehancer Pro, it's a film emulation software that allows you to get some great looks whether you're using a Sony camera, a Nikon camera, a Canon camera, Blackmagic, there's so many film profiles that they have to use. Kodak, Fujifilm, I mean, the list just goes on and on. But what makes it better is that you can use it for DaVinci, you can use it for Premiere Pro, you can use it for Final Cut, and then they also have an app for your phone. Why are you not using this? Photographers. All you have to do is take your pictures, import them, and you have the same amount of film profiles that you have in your computer. You can use them on your phone. You can use the Kodak, the Fujifilm. You can use the CineStyle if you want. It's all there. I'll drop a link below. I'll also drop my code so you can get a discount. Don't forget to use it, and I'll see you guys later. Let's get back to the video. 8K shoot will probably not work for you. So you're probably going to shoot in 4K, or you probably might do the raw feature, might get a 5.9K. So I think up to the 6K, 6K is the sweet spot for most cameras. And I think that is produced on the R3, I believe it is. It's still one of the good features. So the R5C is still in the running with all the cameras that it has. It just has a bad power life. If anybody remembers the Blackmagic cameras, those cameras had a bad battery life, but people still use it, they attach any sort of power source, whether it be a power bank up top, a power bank on the bottom, a V-mount, they made that camera work because it had great image quality. And I think that's where the R5C is right now. Despite the fact that there's so many cameras coming out, the R5C is just unspoken of and it produces great quality. There's so many creators that have actually praised this camera, but due to the fact that there's so many different cameras coming out, it's like, do you really need the R5C right now? My answer is still yes, I think it's still a viable camera. And it all depends on what you're shooting. So those are like the three things that I feel you should really consider when you're looking at this camera. What type of content will you be making with this camera? Is it in your budget? And if it works with your computer? Because outside of that, there's no reason why you wouldn't consider this, especially if you consider the R5. The R5 boasted the 45 megapixels. This has the 45 megapixel in it. This is the same exact R5, just with a fan. These are just the little things that make the R5C still a great camera from when it was introduced even till now. So from 2022 going on till now, 2024, it's still holding its own. And I think it makes for a great cinema camera, especially if you're gonna put it on sticks. Even if you wanna do run and gun style, you know, you wanna rig it out, it makes for a great camera and for photography as well, produces sharp images. So there's nothing really wrong with this camera outside of the fact that there's a few nuances that really can be overlooked in my opinion. There was a quote that I wanna actually leave you guys with and it said that photography is always advancing, but the cameras are not really advancing. So what that really means is that 
Creativity is really what drives your passion with these cameras. You know, you can have all the bells and whistles and still can't produce a great image. And I stand by that. Sometimes you don't need the latest and greatest. You just need something that works for you. If you lack creativity with any camera, you'll lack creating great content that you would like to post on social media or even to pitch to potential clients because they're not gonna see what your vision is if you don't know how to work your camera or if you don't know your limitations of your camera because you'll not be able to produce for them. With that being said, this hybrid, this R5 and C70 mix, I think that it's still a great camera in 2024. I don't see why that people are forgetting about this camera because it produces a great image. But like I said, drop a comment. Let me know exactly what you guys think of the Canon R5C and if you think that they should make an R5C Mark II. I already know some things that I really wish an R5C Mark II should have going out the gate. Um, but I want to hear your comments. You know, I personally think that the HDMI port, even though it's a, it's a workaround, but you know, everyone knows that the little one always breaks off at some point in time, but you have a cable clamp that you can attach to it to make it sturdy and the ND filters. Now for the photography side, some people might want a backsided illuminated sensor, which is okay, fine. But if you love the R5, you still love the R5C because there's nothing different about it, at least on the photo side. So those are just a few things that I would love to um, see in an R5C Mark II. Speaking of that, when I was in the, um, one of my Discord channels, we had a conversation and this guy gave me a list of things to go through. Shout out to him right there. All right. So I want to see exactly what you guys think is missing. Drop a comment and we'll talk about that in the comments. So until then, I'll see you guys on the next one. And don't forget, stay creative.